All right, here's the lab notebook for our circular motion lab that we're gonna be doing tomorrow in class. The purpose of the lab is to be able to calculate centripetal force. The skills for the lab are gonna be um, using equations and um, calculating percent error. Our diagram, we have, this is a rubber stopper. Um, I'm gonna post another video, one that I didn't make, but it's of the same lab. Um, this is gonna be where you're holding on to the string, and this is gonna be uh, one of our hanging masses. So I labeled one is my hanging mass, two is my rubber stopper, and I also have the radius of my thing that's moving in a circle. This thing's gonna be moving around in a circle. I will demonstrate this for you tomorrow and it's also in the video, the other video that I'm going to post. Your equipment we're going to be using are the masses, the string, the rubber stopper, a protractor if you need it, meter stick, stopwatch, and a scale. The measurements we're going to be collecting are the radius, um, the time it takes to go some revolutions in the circle, and the masses of your um, hanging mass and your rubber stopper. So our procedure is going to be to set up the apparatus as shown in the diagram and also you can use the video to help you. Uh, the, we're going to mass our hanging mass and our rubber stopper. And then we're going to time how long it takes to go um, 10 revolutions with our stopwatch. Um, and we're going to measure the theta with the horizontal if there is one. So we would like it to go um, exactly horizontal, but a lot of the times it might go down. Um, it might go down. So we are going to calculate this theta in here if it's swirling around like this. Instead, um, we can collect this theta. I'll show you how to use that if you um, are not able to get it completely perpendicular. All right, our data is going to be the time it takes to go 10 revolutions. We're going to do this four times and then take the average, the average for our time. We're going to call that capital T, and I'll talk about that on the next page. So we're going to measure our radius. We're going to measure our masses. We're going to take the average of our time. For our calculations, we're going to be calculating our centripetal force, right? The centripetal force in this case, or our net force, is going to be just our tension is equal to our mv squared over r. This m is the mass 2 of our rubber stopper. So the reason we took our time, our revolutions, is because we need to calculate our velocity. Our velocity is our displacement divided by time. Our displacement in this case is going to be the circumference okay. of our circle and the time it takes to go one circumference, which is our period. So T is the period, which is the time it takes to go one cycle. One second. So um, our circumference is 2 pi r. This is the radius, the one that we identified in our diagram, um, divided by our time, the time that we uh, took with our stopwatch. So we can calculate our velocity like this and do some okay, substitutions yeah. in here. So this is the tension in the rope. And T, capital T, is the time of our period. I know this is confusing, so if you want to write F sub T or um, write out the full name period or write out the full name tension, you can do that. So, or you can use little t if you want, even though it's not exactly the same thing. So my equation becomes my centripetal force, which in this case is my tension, is going to be equal to 2 pi r 
over my period squared divided by my radius. So we have our radius, we have our period, um, we have two pi, we can calculate what the tension and the rope is gonna be. So um, my free body diagram for this thing when it's moving in a circle is gonna be mg down and my tension towards the center of the circle. So when I'm going around in my circle, my tension is the only thing causing this centripetal motion. This is for the stopper, rubber stopper. Okay. All right, so uh, we can calculate our centripetal force. So our centripetal force is equal to our tension. Um, let's figure out what this is. But we also know that uh, the free body diagram for my hanging mass is going to be mg down, tension up. So when I sum my forces for my hanging mass, it's going to be tension minus mg equal to zero. So I know that the tension should also be equal to m1g. So we are going to compare the two. So we are going to calculate the centripetal force using our equation up here. 2 pi r squared divided by t divided by r and <clears throat> compare it to m1g. So we're going to find our percent difference. So our percent difference or our percent error is going to be the actual which is m1g minus the theoretical or the calculated divided by the theoretical. I don't know if I spelled that right. And this is the absolute value and times 100. And we'll see how close our mg is to what we calculated for our centripetal force.